questions without notice. The Deputy Leader. Thank you, sir. My question is to the Premier. Uh, has the Premier seen John Setka's comments that fears of South Australian builders about the expansion of IncoLink into South Australia are unfounded? And if so, what is his response? And with your leave and that of the House, I'll explain, sir. Leave your sword as they've granted. Yeah. Deputy Leader. Thank you. The Advertiser recently reported that John Setka, CFMEU State Secretary and a director of IncoLink, said, and I quote, I don't see what the downside is. I can't understand what the hysteria is. I think it's people being a bit parochial. And he then went on to compare Incolink to a Rolls-Royce scheme and the burst scheme to what he described as a rusted-out VH Holden. Premier. Uh, no, I haven't seen the remarks from John Sink, uh, that to which you refer. I might also add, Deputy Leader, that I'm not certain as to what exactly it is that is being inquired of in terms of the Premier's responsibility to the House or in respect of his ministerial responsibilities. Those may be matters you're coming to. Deputy Leader. Thank you, sir. I refer the Speaker to the Premier's answers in last question time. Uh, sir, my question is to the Premier. Can the Premier provide an update on what actions have been taken to protect our local construction industry from the CFMEU takeover of the Burst Worker Redundancy Fund? Uh, and with your leave, sir, and that of the House, I'll explain. Order. There is a point of order from the Leader of Government Business, which I'll hear under 134. Sir, 90, Standing Order 97, questions should not involve argument. The Deputy Leader has involved in this entire question a whole series of arguments, purported facts in his question, and I ask you to ask him either to rephrase or learn how to do it properly. Order. I'm going to turn to the Deputy Leader and give him an opportunity to recast the question. Thank you, sir. Uh, my question is to the Premier. Uh, has the Premier taken any actions to prevent the Burst Worker Redundancy Fund being replaced by IncoLink? And with your leave, sir, and that of the House, I'll explain. Leave your sword as leave granted. Yes, Deputy Leader. Thank you, sir. On the 1st of June, the advertiser reported, and I quote, Premier Peter Malinowskis is moving to block a takeover in South Australia of construction workers' entitlements by a fund backed by controversial union leader John Setka. Vowing the state was willing to deploy powers to throttle the move, Mr Malinowskis highlighted the higher cost to workers and lack of complaints about the existing scheme, end quote. Premier. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, I thank the Deputy Leader of the Opposition for his question. As I have enunciated uh, in this place previously. We are, as a government, assessing our options about how to respond to this. I also asked a, a series of questions that I think are, are pertinent in respect to what is actually occurring within the system. We're aware of the basics around uh, what IncoLink does interstate and what BURST does locally. And to the extent that the government has an interest, and I'm not talking about interest in a regulatory sense or in a legislative sense, I'm talking about has an interest as a matter of public affairs, to the extent the government has an interest, it is simply making sure that workers in South Australia that operate in the industry that are beneficiaries of such a redundancy scheme are best protected and afforded the best entitlements that can be reasonably accommodated um, uh, through the industry. Now, Burst has seemingly done that with effect um, in the past, an arrangement that has been governed jointly between the Master Builders Association of South Australia and also unions in South Australia, including the CFMEU, but also others as well, uh, the CEPU, um, representing electricians and plumbers, for instance. Uh, we see that, that arrangement having operated with a degree of effect in the past in a way that I think has been largely non-controversial, an example of where unions and industry can work together to achieve outcomes um, for employees within the sector. That is largely what happens with IncoLink, and the question that uh, we have is whether or not um, there is a need for a change or if there is a differential in the arrangements between IncoLink and Burst that might provide a, a benefit to workers or might have an expense, an unreasonable expense to industry. These are live questions that are, the government is turning its mind to by making inquiries, but we'll, we'll uh, um, garner all the information that is required, assess our options, and if what we've made clear and what I said in the statement of the House previously that I maintain is that if we see a deleterious impact um, on, on workers or the industry, uh, but particularly the workers because that's for whom the scheme is designed, as a result of a takeover, then we stand ready to take whatever actions we reasonably can. Now, as I explained in the... Um, uh, answer to the House uh, previously when 
questions were asked, I think, of the Deputy Leader of the Opposition then. Um, most of the, the regulatory powers and functions that the state has have since have been lost to the Commonwealth on the back of the work choices referral of powers that happened back then, uh, particularly around the High Court decision around work choices. That is the, the constitutional framework that we operate within that is not for negotiation or interpretation. But there are potentially options that the state government can turn its mind to, and that is what we're assessing, provided, of course, that there is a, a need to do so. I have spoken to, um, um, more recently again, I spoke to uh, the Master Builders Association. I will be speaking to unions regarding the matter to understand the issue as, as fully as we can. I have been in receipt of correspondence from the Secretary um, of the CPU locally here in South Australia, uh, Mr John Adley. Uh, that was correspondence that I had in my weekend um, bag. And I think, as far as I can tell, um, the advocacy that I've, I've received um, from organisations in South Australia over either industry organisations or union organisations, I think the, the consistent theme that I've picked up on the correspondence and the conversations I've had is that there is a desire to ensure, a collective desire to ensure that workers are better off as a result of any changes that are made. Deputy Leader on a supplementary. Uh, in, the, in the Premier's answer, he referred to consideration uh, of potential actions that the government might take. Uh, when is the government going to announce any such actions uh, in response to these uh, submissions that have been made by master builders and other business groups? Premier. Uh, at the appropriate time. 